Hello, welcome to my channel, or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Beth Ann, and um, I'm a bit behind. I think most other booktubers. What I want to do today is talk about um, my overall 2020 reading stats. I've been working on this um, video for a little while. I had to go back and, and reconstruct um, some things because I only started my booktube channel at the very beginning of October, so um, I wasn't keeping as careful track of um, the books that I read prior to that. So um, anyway, a lot of people have been doing these t sorts of stats videos with graphs, um, but I just wanted to do a shout out to Josh over at Josh's Bookish Voyage, who's the um, first person whose video I happened to see doing these graphs. So um, so he was kind of the initial inspiration for me thinking about this. Um, and then the actual um, kind of visual graphics that I use um, are from a Book Riot, their um, annual reading log. They have a publicly available um, Google Drive spreadsheet that anyone can um, download and create their own copy. And it has uh, kind of built in formulas for making all of the graphs that I'm going to show today. So for this year, since I've only been on booktube for a little bit over two months, I just figured if somebody else already invented the wheel, I'm not going to mess with it. So I'm using Book Riot's version. I'll link the URL um, to their announcement article um, in the description box below. Um, and as I go through 2021, I'll probably um, come up with other ways that I want to showcase my reading stats. But um, for this year, I kept it um, really simple. And I should also say that I first heard about this Book Riot reading log um, from Holly over at Holly by Golly Books. Um, so I'm also linking to her as well. Um, okay, so stats. So overall, I read 78 books total, um, which I'm really happy with. My goal was 72 for the whole year. Um, and I think the reason that I made that and then ended up going over it was because I started my booktube channel um, at the beginning of October to kind of motivate myself more and inspire myself more. So I'm really, really happy with that result. Um, for 2021, I've set a total overall number of 80 as the goal that I want to, to reach. I think that'll be pretty easy for me to reach. Um, but I didn't want to go kind of crazy and really increase my number to 100 or something like that. Um, just because I do want to not let the number of books um, make me lose track of um, the actual books that I'm reading. I don't want to end up even subconsciously in a place where I'm choosing books based on their length versus on um, how much they appeal to me or what I want to get out of them. So, um, so I set it for 80. I'm kind of expecting to break that. We'll see how it goes. I might have to readjust for 2022. Anyway, so 78 books total. Um, that was 18,260 pages for the books that I read in print. Um, and then I read several audiobooks, read, listened to several audiobooks, um, and that was over 217 hours of listening. So it's 217 hours and approximately 13 minutes of listening to audiobooks. Okay, so those are my overall stats. So now let's look at some graphs. So um, first, some kind of overall graphs. And all of these first graphs I'm pretty happy with, and I'll, I'll talk about why. So um, first here is fiction versus nonfiction. So about 40% nonfiction, about 60% fiction. Um, I'm pretty happy with that breakdown, actually. Um, I think nonfiction November really helped me up that nonfiction number. Um, but fiction is what I'm always going to gravitate to towards my own enjoyment. But I want to make sure I always have a pretty high percentage of nonfiction because I also enjoy reading for learning and expanding my brain and my horizons. And nonfiction, of course, is really important for that. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with this breakdown. And if I can keep at this 40-60 split um, going forward, that's um, a really good place for me, I think. Um, okay, next graph is format. So I read most of my books in print, um, but then I've got strong representation, I think, in audio and digital format, so in Kindle. Um, I'm expecting this to possibly increase a bit in 2021, just because I do um, want to read some more self-published authors, and I think those will be almost entirely um, Kindle reads, so we'll see. The flip side is that I don't really like supporting Amazon because I have issues with that company, and so um, I'm, I'm hoping to not really increase my digital too much. Um, the one other exception, of course, is that sometimes it's faster to get a digital book from the library um, as opposed to waiting for a print copy, especially when I'm trying to read new releases. Um, so we'll kind of see how that breakdown works out. In general, I prefer print books, so um, I'll probably still have a majority of print books in 2021. Um, 
And audio is totally hit or miss. Not, I don't mean hit or miss. I always enjoy audiobooks, but I mean um, the amount of time I put into it because I tend to really like to listen to audiobooks when I'm driving a lot, which I often do for work, but I'm not sure if I will be doing that this year, um, partly with the continuing pandemic um, and partly just because as I progress upwards in my um, scientific career, I do less of the fun hands-on stuff, which in my field requires driving um, and more of the sitting at my desk using my brain stuff. Um, so we'll just see how that goes for this year, but if it stays the same, I'd be um, perfectly happy with that. Okay, third graph. So audience, so mostly adult books um, with a smattering of YA and some, um, in my case, middle grade, although the category here is children slash middle grade, but middle grade. So I'm very happy with this. I'm an adult. I want to be reading by far a majority of, of adult books to fit my maturity level, but I do really appreciate a good YA novel. Um, and I think middle grade can be fun. And as I've mentioned many times, I have a daughter, she's only three, but I like to be a little bit of way aware of kind of where the state of middle grade publishing is, where the state of YA publishing is, um, just to know what she'll be getting into in the next, uh, several years. Um, okay, next we have form. So mostly prose books and about 25 or 30 percent of a mix of everything else, essay collections, short stories, plays, comics, um, so the, and some poetry. I think the pink, which doesn't really show up with a label, is um, poetry. So um, mostly pretty happy with this. I definitely um, kind of gravitate towards prose just because I gravitate towards fiction. In 2021, I would like to read a few more short story essay collections, um, definitely some more poetry collections, but I'm not really going to stress myself out about it. Um, I don't want to force myself into doing that, um, but I think especially um, being part of the Book Naturalists Book Club, book club um, organized by Heidi over at My Reading Life and Doris at Aldi Books, I think we're going to be reading a lot of essay collections of nature writing, so that will help me up those categories. Um, so again, not a huge priority, but I would like to kind of diversify um, the, the narrative forms um, that I'm reading. Okay, moving on. So next, looking at genre. So I had a whole mix of genres, which I'm really happy about. I love um, being kind of an eclectic reader, which is how I think of myself. Although if you lump fantasy and sci-fi, which some people do, we're at like 40% fantasy and sci-fi, which that's fine. It's my happy place. Not going to quibble about that. Um, so I like having a mix of these other genres. There's, you know, if I wanted to get nitpicky, there's genres I'd like to read more of. I'd like to read more nature science. I'd like to read more current affairs. I'd like to read more mystery crime. I'd like to read more of all of these, but there's only so much time that I have for reading. So I think if my graph next year in 2021 looks similar to this one, then I'm happy. Um, I just don't want it to be overwhelmingly dominated by one or two colors. Okay, moving on, book source. Um, so I wasn't really, this is one of the categories that I wasn't keeping track of and was a little bit hard to go back and think about. Um, so the biggest category here is own TBR, um, which includes Kindle books that I bought, audiobooks I had on Audible, which I have since canceled my membership to, um, kind of backlisted books on my physical shelves. So a whole bunch of categories are kind of lumped in there and I might try to break those out in 2021. Um, and then we've got a good representation from the library, which is mostly the latter part of the year once I'd started my booktube channel, um, and then a few gifts. So I think moving forward to 2021, this is going to shift to have a larger representation from the library um, and slightly smaller in the own TBR. And then I do want to keep track of within my own TBR books that I already owned prior to 2021 compared to books that I bought new um, or new to me um, in 2021. So that big blue chunk is going to, um, I think, get divided this year with more careful tracking. Um, okay, so let's look at how I liked books. So here are my star ratings. So I'm a, I, I do a good job picking books that I like. Who knew? Um, that or I'm a positive person who just likes lots of books, which is also true. I am not very picky. Um, so yeah, this is fine. Of course, I'm reading books that I like. Um, one thing I am trying to do is trying to be a little bit more conservative with my five star ratings. I think for most of my life, I've been assigning star ratings on Goodreads since 2010 or 2011, I guess. Um, and I tend to just read a book and be like overwhelmed with joy. And then I go to Goodreads and I rate it five stars, but then I come back like a year later and I'm like, that book was 
not good compared to all these other amazing books I've read since then. Um, it's very subjective. We all know that, right? But, um, but I do want to be more critical with my five stars. I want my five star rating to mean something going forward. Um, and be really reserved for kind of special books. So I kind of started doing that towards the end of 2020 and we'll see if I can come up with kind of a more consistent, uh, internally consistent rating um, as we move forward. So it'll be interesting to see what this spread looks like at the end of 2021. All right, the next four graphs I'm gonna show are all ones where I definitely wanna do better in 2021. And these are ones that break down um, kind of obvious identities of the authors. So first I'm showing um, author gender. So I am about 50-50 male and female with a tiny representation of non-binary folks. Um, the 50-50 male female isn't bad. I'd like to be reading more female authors, I think. Um, and I'd certainly like to read more non-binary authors to the extent that that's possible. I know there's probably a lot of people that aren't out in the publishing world. Um, but I would like to make an effort to, to read more than, um, I think the two or three, uh, maybe two books, um, from 2020 that were by non-binary non folks. Um, so next looking at my queer author breakdown. So again, this is another one where I'd really like to do better. I only had 11, what is 11.5%, um, authors that I, it was easily able to, um, figure out whether they identify as queer or not. Um, and I really don't like that. I'm actually kind of surprised. I thought I was doing, um, a bit better, but, but no, I wasn't. So, um, definitely going to try to do better with that in 2021. Um, and this is just a way for me to, um, just kind of think about what am I doing in my own tiny way to correct for the historic exclusion of, of certain groups of people from the publishing industry, which, we all know has been white male dominated for its entire existence. So it's just like, can I do like the tiniest bit to correct for that? Um, and then also to just expand my own horizons by exposing myself to viewpoints and experiences that aren't my own so that I have a better understanding of humanity. Um, so that's very important to me. Um, and that goes into the, this next graph, which is nation of origin. So I did a terrible job of this in, um, in 2020, so we've got almost entirely U.S., 75% U.S., um, with uh, good representation from the U.K., and then just a little teeny hint of Australia and Canada. So, wow, Beth Ann, oh my gosh. So I would definitely like to do better with that. Um, this isn't going to be one of my, my strong priorities. The next graph I'm going to show is um, just a super simple POC versus white author. Um, graph, uh, and I should say BIPOC, um, because that's what I use those categories for for the next one. Um, but I, I do want to read a lot of um, Black American authors as well as Indigenous American authors. Um, so that's why the Nation of Origin thing, I definitely want to do better, but it's not a big priority for me necessarily, because um, for me currently, it's a bigger priority to read those other voices in my own country. So finally, the next graph that I they already that I already mentioned is POC authors versus white authors. Um, and this was another one that was a little surprising to me because like with the queer authors, one, I thought I was doing better um, because I really stepped up my own anti-racism reading in 2020. Um, but of course, a lot of the anti-racism books are hard to get through. They're impactful. You have to sit with it. You have to think about it. And so even though it felt like I was reading a lot of anti-racist literature, um, when it comes to number of books, it wasn't as much as I thought just because I was sitting so much longer with each of those books than with just a typical fiction novel or fantasy novel. Um, so that's kind of an interesting point to me about how my own, um, kind of perceptions in the moment of what I'm reading aren't matching like my annual stats. So that'll be a good thing for me to keep an eye on um, as we move through 2021, just kind of keeping track of, of where I am in this pie chart um, so that I can do a better job um, increasing representation of diverse viewpoints um, in my reading. So those are all the graphs I had. I hope that was fun and nerdy for everyone. I think this is definitely as nerdy as it is to make videos talking about the books we're reading. I think this is maybe the nerdiest part of booktube that so many of us have an insane amount of fun making graphs about our own reading and then watching videos of other people's graphs about their reading. I love it. So I've been trying to catch up on all of the um, stats videos that everyone's been posting over the past couple of weeks. Um, 
So anyway, thank you for watching. Um, if you watched this whole thing, let me know if you've got any uh, snap reflections on, on my stats. Um, I'd love to hear from anybody who watched this. Was there anything that surprised you in your own end of year wrap up stats? Did you um, accomplish goals you weren't sure you'd accomplished? What goals did you um, not quite get to? Were there any, uh, any of these kind of demographic surprises about people or types of books that you thought you were reading more than you were? Um, or that um, you thought you were reading less than you ended up reading. Yeah, just what other surprises are, are people have other people having when when they do these um, these sorts of analyses with their own reading. Um, so yeah, if you like what I'm doing and are excited to see what I read in this new year, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much. Bye.